You may have been on a roller coaster that felt like it was about to fly off the tracks. Perhaps it was a wild mouse with its tight turns, or perhaps it was a hyper coaster with its huge airtime hills, or maybe it was another type of ride altogether. Regardless of the coaster you were on, it's great that the forces of the ride made you feel this way. And luckily, thanks to a system of wheels, it's impossible for the train to actually fly off the tracks. Roller coasters use three sets of wheels on each wheel truck to ensure that the ride cannot come off the track under normal conditions. The first set of wheels is the road wheels. On most roller coasters, this is the two largest wheels on the top of the track. These wheels are the basic wheels that you probably think of when talking about roller coasters. These wheels are what the train rolls on and they support the weight of the train. The next set of wheels is the side friction wheels. These wheels are on either the inside or the outside of the track depending on the type of coaster. On all B&M coasters, for example, they're on the outside. However, coasters made by Aero have them on the inside. These wheels prevent the train from coming off the track during moments of lateral g-forces, such as turns. The final set of wheels most roller coasters have is upstops. I say most because some roller coasters do not have upstops. Rides without upstops are extremely old and only a few exist in the world today. These rides do not have enough forces to require upstops anyway. Unlike side friction wheels and road wheels, Upstops do not always come in the form of wheels. Some coasters that do not have strong negative g-forces use upstop pads rather than wheels. These pads have the advantage of having no moving parts and therefore they are cheaper to maintain. One of the largest coasters that uses upstop pads is Gemini at Cedar Point, an aero hybrid racing coaster. These pads have to be replaced semi-frequently due to them wearing out from being slammed into the underside of the track when the train experiences negative g's, otherwise known as airtime. Interestingly, Magnum XL200, the airtime-packed hypercoaster next to Gemini, opened with upstop pads. But after the spark fest that soon ensued and the frequent pad replacement required, they were replaced with upstop wheels that the coaster now uses. Upstop wheels serve the same purpose as upstop pads, only that wheels obviously roll, causing them to be used on rides that go upside down or have lots of airtime. Some manufacturers will leave a small gap between the upstop wheels and the track while others, like B&M, prefer to have their upstop wheels touching the track at all times. Now for some special cases. Most kitty coasters do not pull a lot of forces, and so many of them use just a two-part wheel assembly rather than a three-part wheel assembly used on larger rides. This works by using the side friction wheel as an upstop wheel. On Vacoma's junior coaster, for example, this wheel is about halfway between where a normal upstop and a normal side friction wheel would be. I hope this video helped you gain a better understanding of how roller coasters really work, and just how safe they really are. If you have a question about roller coaster safety, simply comment it below and it may be featured on the next video in this series. Thanks for watching!